Hello, my name's Mary and I'm from Not Modern. Not Modern is a macrame DIY kit and supplies business. Um, we specialise in DIY macrame kits like this one, uh, where we provide beautiful patterns that are easy for people to accomplish. Uh, our kits come with a full, full range of supplies required to complete your project, um, everything you need and very detailed instructions. So today uh, you're joining us for a workshop for the Tiffany wall hanging. It's probably our most popular wall hanging kit and it's a perfect beginner project. So that's what we're going to be working with today. I'm going to start to explain what's in the kit because some of you watching this will be using your kit and I'll explain what's in the kit if you don't have a kit, what, what you can use um, instead and what you can cut your own materials to. So for the Tiffany kit comes firstly with a piece of dowel. Um, this is 40 centimetres. You could also use a branch or um, whatever, a copper rod, whatever you have. The kit comes with a piece of dowel, 40 centimetres. Next is the rope. And today we're using our five millimetre natural rope. Uh, and I've got 16 cords that I've pre-cut to length if you've purchased a kit. Um, and that's 16 cords at 5 metres long and that's our 5 millimetre natural cord. I've then included another couple of little small pieces of cord, one's 120 centimetres and one's 60 centimetres and you can use either or for hanging your project in the end. And we also have a tape measure uh, included in the kit for measuring as you go. And as we've got some beads, we're going to add some wooden beads. I've got nine wooden beads. These are 25 mil beads uh, with a 10 millimeter hole. So perfect for macrame. And last but not least, we have our very detailed instructions. Um, so you can follow along with the video uh, and also refer to your written instructions as you need to. Now, working your project, I recommend I always work sitting or standing with my project upright uh, using a rack such as this one. This is an IKEA rack, they're $9.95, um, so quite affordable. But prior to having a rack, I used to simply get a piece of string, this one here. Now I'd take a, a picture off the wall and use a picture hook or a knob, and I'd either tie my ring or wood to that and work that way. I find working with your project upright, it's more, it's easy to check that your levels are correct uh, and that the symmetry is right. When you're working face down on your project, um, you can't quite get that same symmetry. It can look fine when you're working um, face down, but when you hang your project up, it can look a bit skew with. So I find this is the best way for me. And while I'm on the subject, be careful of your posture you're doing something new, you're often concentrating, make sure that you've got your project at the right level for you, uh, that you're not um, hurting your shoulders or your neck. So just be aware and, and work safely as you're doing it. So we're going to take firstly our rope. There's only two knots to this project, which is fantastic. Um, the detail in it is more where I've placed the knots rather than um, complicated knots. So the first knot is the lark's head knot, and that's the knot that we can that attaches our cords to the dowel. And then the second knot we do is a square knot. And these knots are all square knots, and it's merely how you place them that form this lovely pattern. Okay, so let's get started on our Tiffany wall hanging project. So first you're going to take, and if you've got the kit, you would have 16 cords pre-cut to length. Um, I actually pop a little bit of tape, a bit of cello tape on the end so my ends don't ravel and I do that for all my kits that I pre-cut. So we've got 16 5 metre cords here of our cotton rope. So it's there's a knot at one end so I undo the knot and we're going to mount each of these cords onto our dowel. Now I tend to place them over my neck to work with. Um, I find that easier and take them one, off one at a time so we don't get tangled up. Okay, so let's take our first cord. 
So with the first chord, I match up the ends, and this doesn't have to be perfect. I allow plenty of length in my projects, okay? And we're doubling the chord, and we have a loop at the top. Okay, so that chord's doubled with a loop at the top. So for the lark's head knot, we simply take our loop and we go up and over. Okay, similar to like a hurdle, up and over to the back. Our loops at the back and we pinch those two chords and pull them through. So this is how you mount your rope onto your branch, your wood, another piece of string. You mount your chords to start your project with a lark's head knot. So let's do that again. So I'm taking my next cord there around my neck, my rope scarf. I'm doubling them up. Again, I don't have to be perfect with this. We have our loop over the top and we go up and over. And pull them through. Okay, and see how we have a nice loop at the top. And we just keep going. I find having them around your neck, you can get a, a lot less tangled up. But we are doing the crame, so knots are allowed. So don't be too concerned if they get tangled up. Here's our loop, up and over. And this is the first knot. So this is the lark's head knot. So you're going to add all 16 chords. So we just work our way through. Now, everyone works at a different pace with macrame. This project I anticipate, and pulling those through, will take approximately two and a half hours to three hours, but really you can work at your own pace. And what you can do is stop and start the recording as you need to go. If you need to recheck something, you can relook at it um, and just work at your own pace. Because the real important factor in all this is enjoying yourself. There's something quite mindful about macrame. Once you get the hang of the basics, it's quite an easy craft and it's very relaxing. And what I love about it is you can get a project like this completed in a few hours in an afternoon or a morning. So I'm just continuing along until we have all 16 chords mounted on our rod. Now at this stage, you want to space them out evenly. They kind of find their own position as you're doing the knotting, so you don't have to overthink that too much. The main thing at this stage is to get all these chords on and you'll find you'll get faster as you go, as you get the hang. It's up and over. And sometimes once you get confident, you can forget to concentrate and go under and that way, um, which will just produce a different look and you want a uniform look. So the loops are up and over. We're just gonna keep working those cords through. So this is a cotton cord. All my cords that I stock for my kits and my supplies are cotton. Back in the day in macrame, they used to use lots of other fibres, a lot of acrylic and a lot of jute, which is really rough on the hands. I love working with cotton. Uh, it's more environmentally friendly, particularly my recycled cotton cords. My Bobbany recycled cotton cords are 100% recycled. So they take waste from the textile industry and turn them into these beautiful cords that we work with. So already our wall hanging's taking shape and this is the first of only two knots we do in this project. So once you've got the lark's head knot worked out, that's one knot down and only one knot to go. So well done. You may hear, this is my home studio that we're filming in today and my dog Bob, which if any of you follow me on Instagram or Facebook would be well familiar with. He's snoring away in the corner, so my apologies if you can hear that. Okay, so let's continue. We're getting there. The cords are feeling lighter around the neck. We're nearly there. So up and over and pulling through. And we're nearly ready to start our next knot 
which is the square knot. And a lot of my patterns, lark's head knots and square knots, if you just master those two knots, you can make so many things. I, you can see some very elaborate macrame out there, but for me, the real beauty of macrame is in the simplicity. And uh, just simply with square knots, you can make lots of beautiful projects. So that makes it a perfect beginner project. All right, just got a couple more to go and we're nearly done. So this is 16 cords doubled and mounted onto our dowel, which gives us 32 working cords. And here's the last one. So that's your Lark's Head Knot. What you should have now is something similar to this. Okay, we can, we can really hear Bob snoring now. Okay. He's seen seen this knot before, so he's a bit bored. Okay, so that's the Lark's Head Knot. There he is there. Hey, Bob. Hello. <laughs> okay, so that's the Lark's Head Knot, and we've mounted all our cords onto our rod. I'm now going to demonstrate the square knot. If you've made my plant hanger workshop previously, you'll be familiar with it, but we'll just do a little refresher now. So I'm just going to move this one for a moment and pop that up, and let's do the square knot. So the square knot uses four chords. You've got your two middle filler chords. These are the chords you tie your knots around. And you've got your two outer chords. These are your working chords. These are the chords that tie the knot. So tying knots around the other chords are what make the knots sit nicely and look attractive um, for our decorative knotting. So we've got four chords. I always start on the left. I start on the same side every time so I don't get confused. Um, and I find that an easy way to work. Okay, so we've got our two outer working cords. We've got our inner filler cords. Okay, we take the first cord. Now I'm doing this as a demonstration with different coloured cords, just so it makes it easier for you to see, because when you're working on your project, you'll be using all natural, all the same colour cords. So with the first cord, we form a right angle. The second cord we put in front, like a letter four. Now the mantra you say with the second chord is front, behind, and through. Okay? Now at this point I drop the chords to orientate myself. I think these are my filler chords, these are the working chords. And I gently position my chords. Now I did that by holding on to the filler chords and seesawing, gently tugging on each side. If we just that's actually quite a quite a cool knot, but it's not what we're looking for in this project. We want nice, even, neat knots. So we hold on to the middle cords and we seesaw and put it up into position. So that's the first half of the square knot. We do a right angle on the, right, on the left. Now we're going to do the right angle on the right. We're going to do a mirror image of what we did before. So this time we take our right angle and it's on the right side, and the other chord, our, our mantra is front. So can we see that's like a mirror image four, if you looked at a four in the mirror. And we go front, behind, and through. Okay, so that's the second half. There's two parts to this knot, a right angle on the left, and then a right angle on the right. We've got two rungs here, so we know that that's a square knot. So let's do that again. Form our right angle, we start on the left side, and that's all that chord does. The second chord is the mantra front, behind, and through. Front, behind, and through. Okay, now we do the same on the opposite side. Our right angle's on our right side. We go front, behind, and through. Okay, 
I'm going to swap over now to our wall hanging. And as I said, that's why I like to explain first on the coloured rope, because now we've got all the same coloured rope. And, according, and what we're going to do following this pattern is we're going to make eight square knots across. So my patterns for these work in rows across. And if I lift this one up just to show you, we work in rows across this way, okay? And it's sometimes I say leave two cords free, make three square knots, so your rows work across. With pot hangers, the rows work down with the same group of four to get our arms of our pot hanger. But with the wall hangings, we're gonna work across, row at a time. And you can follow along with your pattern as well. I use a piece of card or a piece of paper under each row as I do it, so I don't lose my place. Okay. So we take the first four cords, and again they're longer than what our practice piece was. So four groups of four cords, we've got our two middle cords and our two working cords. So what do we do? We do a right angle at first with the left, and we go front, behind, and through. And see how I'm holding on to the cords with my thumb? and pulling on the other one just to help get it all in position. Now I'm dropping my cords, I'm orientating myself and I'm swapping thumbs, getting that cord and I want it to sit just about less than a centimetre underneath, okay? Again, you don't need to overthink this stage. Right, so now the second part of the knot is the right angle on the right side. So we've got our mirror image four, front, behind and through and we pull that cord through. Now like crochet, um, knitting, a lot of other fibre crafts, some people are tight knitters, tight crochets, some do more looser work. It's exactly the same with macrame. The, you can do lovely loose knots or I'm, I knot quite tightly um, it doesn't matter, you'll fall into your own rhythm of what works for you, okay? The main thing you want to make sure is that they're quite uniform, so I don't yank them too tight, or you don't want them too loose, okay? So just find your happy medium. So we've done that, once we've done those four chords, we're done. We move on to the next four, okay? And we're making another square knot because we want eight square knots across. Again, we've got our two middle chords and our two worker chords. Form a right angle, front, behind, and through. Right angle on the opposite side, front, behind, and through. And that's all there is to that knot. So we'll tighten that into position. And we move on to the next four chords. Right angle on the left, front, behind, and through. right angle on the right, front, behind and through. And we just keep working across our work for our eight square knots, front, behind and through. Okay. Right angle on the left, front, behind and through. And already we can start to see it taking shape. Right angle on the right side, front, behind and through. Okay, next group of four. Right angle on that side, on the left, front, behind and through. Right angle on the right side, front, behind and through. You see how I'm using my fingers to hold the cords into position? I'll show you another trick with the next one that I see a lot of beginners make. Okay, so we take our right angle on the left, front, behind and through. And sometimes people, when you let that cord through, let it drop on that side. I often see people going like that and then they get confused about what cords what. 
So again, drop your chords. If you're getting confused about your chords, drop your chords and think, right, these are my middle, these are my filler. Now we're doing the right angle on that side. Front, behind, and I'm gently pulling it through and I want the cord, when it comes through, to go out the side I'm working. So the cord's falling out that way. Okay, here's the last one. Right angle on the opposite. So there's our first row completed. We've got eight square knots across. So for the next row, and I'll just read it out to you if you're following along uh, with my pattern. For the next row, we're going to leave two chords free and make three square knots across. Leave four chords free in the middle and make another three. So let me show you how we do that. So these two chords we leave free, that means we don't knot with them. So we take the next two and the first two of the next one. Okay, and we make three square knots. So right angle, front, behind, and through. Now if you've done a plant hanger one, especially my simplicity one, you'll say, but hang on, some chords are the filler chords and some are the working chords. In wall hangings, you, you forget about that with each row. You just start from 1 to 32 in this case. So we position that about the same level. And again, what do we do? The right angle on the opposite side. Front, behind and through. And there's our first two, our first square knot. You can pull it and you can adjust it until you're happy with it. So moving along, we leave that chord alone. We don't want to use it again. We take the two next chords. Okay. Front, behind and through. front, behind and through. So that's two, we need to do a third one. So this is our third one. Again we're taking two from here and two from here. Front, behind and through. Front, behind and through. So that's our three square knots. Then the pattern is telling us to leave four chords free in the middle here. One, two, three, four. So we don't knot with those, we don't use them at all. Then we're going to do three more square knots and we'll have two chords left at the end. Okay, so there's my one, two, three, four chords free. Take the next two and the next two and make a square knot. We're going to make three of them across. Front, behind and through. Front, behind and through. Now you may not be able to work as quickly, so by all means, just pause the video uh, and catch up uh, and, start, and start it back up when you're ready, okay? Now, the pattern we're doing here is called the alternating square knot pattern. And it's alternating because you alternate the working chords and the filler chords. As I explained, if we were doing a pot hanger, the chord, we do our knots all on the same chords. But this is an alternating knot pattern, so we take two chords from one and two from the other, and we're forming like a mesh. Your wall hangings form more like a mesh, uh, whereas your pot hangers are all the straight, straight down. So that's called an alternating square knot pattern. You're alternating the chords that you're using as working and filling chords. The best tip I can give you, you always need two chords from one knot above and two chords from the other. If you're using three chords from one and four chords from one, you're using the wrong chords uh, and the pattern's not going to work. It's going to look funny. So in anything you're doing uh, with square knots in alternating patterns, you always take two chords from one row above and two chords from the other. Another mistake a lot of beginners make is when they're working along, they've done this one, and then they might, once you've done the knot, you're finished with those four chords and you need to move on to the next four chords. But sometimes people get confused and they still try and use that chord in the next one. 
So once you've done your square knot, you leave those chords and you move on to the next two and you check the knot above and go, right, we've got two chords from that one, two chords from that one, we know we're on track and we do our square knot. Okay. So there's our second row completed. Okay, we left two chords free at the beginning. We did three square knots across. We left four chords free in the middle. And then we did another three across with two chords free at the end. So we glance back at our pattern and we see the next row. We leave four chords free. One, two, three, four. And the next, so we're going to do two square knots across, have eight free chords in the middle, and another two square knots across. What we're doing is making triangles, essentially. So the triangles are going down this way, and that's how the pattern forms. So I'm following my pattern. I've moved my card down to the next row, to row three. I know I have to leave four chords free at the end. And so I take the next four chords and I make my square knot. I know I'm right because when I look at these, I've got two chords from one knot above and two chords from the other. So let's make our two square knots. So that's one. And that's two. Now we're going to leave eight chords free in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know that we're going to do our next square knot with these four chords across, with our eight free in the middle. Okay, and I know I'm right because I've got two from the chord, one knot above and two from the other knot above. So I'm going to make two square knots across. So here's my first one. And here's my second one. And then we've got four chords free at the end. So I'm just checking that we're symmetrical and we know we're on the right track because we've got four chords free that side, four chords free that side, and that's all looking symmetrical. Now at this point I might bring my chords in a little bit so they're not pulling. And this is where it automatically finds the tension that's right for you. So that's it, I'm happy with that. So what does our next row say? We need to leave the first six chords free and make one square knot. Leave 12 chords free in the middle and make another square knot and then six chords free at the end. So one, two, three, four, five, six chords free. So I'm not going to use that, I'm going to use the next four chords. I know I'm right because I've got two from one knot above and two from the other. And I only have to do one square knot here. And you can see that's forming our triangle shape. Now we're going to leave 12 chords free in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 chords free and we're going to make a square knot with those next four and again I've got two from one, two from the other, I know I'm right. So now we've formed two triangles at the top and the next pattern is going to be, if I lift this up for you to see, this is actually a triangle in the middle here. So that's the next section we're doing. So I check on my pattern, we're going to leave eight chords free and make four square knots across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chords free. And then we're going to make four square knots across, leaving eight, square, eight chords free on that side. Now here's a tip. I'm going to do one square knot here. 
So I've got my two, four, six, eight chords free. Okay, I'm going to do my square knot there. And then I'm going to move on to this side and do the square knot that comes on this side. And I'll explain why in a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll do another square knot here. Now I could work across, but it's going to be hard to keep them all neat. But if you do a square knot here and a square knot here, you can even up the two in the middle to keep your line even across. Now you don't have to be too particular about this because the pattern still looks pretty, but if you want to do that and get it, so let's go two, four, six, eight. So we'll take these four chords and I'll do a square knot here. So we've got eight chords free at each end and we know we need four square knots in the middle here. So there's our first one. And then I can just make a square knot with these four and a square knot with these four and that will give us our four across, but it's easier to get it even. So here's a tip to get your knots even, because we've got quite a gap this time, because when we do our square knot, it has to sit in line with these two. It can't be up here, it won't work with the pattern. We work always across in horizontal lines. So I think the knot wants to sit about there. I put my cords out and I think, yep, that looks pretty straight. I'm pretty happy with that. So I use my first half of the square knot, the right angle on the left side, to get the knot into position. And I'm going to tighten it with the knot on this side. So here's our square knot on this side. And I'm not going to, I'm going to very slowly and gently put that into position. I can pull on those middle ones, I can pull that down. And that's how I get that knot even. We don't want it sitting up there or we have, we want our knot line evenly across. So let's do that again. I'm going to use my first knot as my positioning. And I think, yes, that's perfect. That's where I want it. And I'm going to tighten it with my second knot. And there's our four across. Again, I'm pulling on those cords. Don't overthink this step, like that's not perfect. Here's how you tighten it up. I'll pull a bit on those top ones, and I'm happy with that. When we do our next rows, they'll even up. Okay, don't forget this is your first, probably your first wall hanging project. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you're all knotted, you won't even notice. So there's our four across, but you can see by doing one that side and one that side, and then the two in the middle, it's easier to get it a nice even line than to start here and try and guess. So what does our pattern say next? We have to leave 10 chords free and make three square knots across. Two, four, six, eight, 10 chords free. And we're gonna make a square knot with the next four chords. And I know I'm right, I've got two chords from one previous knot and two chords from the other. And we do three square knots across. in a bit more. That's number two. And that's number three. Now I think you can see the pattern we've got developing. We've got another triangle in this middle. And that's how the pattern works with diagonal lines all the way down. So you can see by working rows across we're making our pattern. So now we're going to take 12 chords free, two four, six, eight, ten, twelve chords free, and we're going to do two square knots across, so I grab the next four chords, two from one previous knot, two from the other, okay, and the next four chords, And 12 free at the end. Last row in our pattern. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 chords free, one square knot in the middle and 14 chords free on the other side. And that completes our pattern. So now for this project, a bit of hair stuck there, that is our pattern 
and we simply repeat that and I'll bring this up to show you we simply repeat that pattern two more times okay now you can if you if you're not not very tightly you might have more room and you can do a fourth lot of the pattern for this sake we're going to do three but I do allow plenty of extra cord if you're not loosely it'll come down longer um, so see how you go with that as you work your project through but I'm just going to give you a tip of starting the pattern off again okay so we go back and we're starting at the first row again and the first row was eight square knots across now if we just start here and start working across you can see we're going to have the same problem we had with this triangle it, it's going to be hard to keep it neat and even because we've got such gaps here because the next row has got to start there so I suggest each time you start this first row of four of eight square knots you work from the bottom out or the middle out to get your knots even okay now remembering we always take two square knots two cords from one square knot and two cords from the one above I know those are the four, four cords I'm going to be using, okay? So I make a square knot on this side. I want to sit about there. So this is our eight across, okay? And now I'm going to do it on this side. So we know that's the line we want to take across, okay, I can tighten that one up a little bit I think. And we're going to just keep working because we want a line here of eight square knots across. So let's get the next four, again don't make the mistake of using this, we've finished with this one, we want the next four. And we know we're right because we've got two cords from one square knot and two cords from the other, okay. Now remember you use your first half of the square knot to position it. And I think that's about where I want it. I'm using my cords to stretch it across and we tighten it with the second one. Okay, now I'm going to move over to this side. I've got two chords from one, two chords from the other, the next four across. I'm going to use the first knot to work out my position and I think that's where I want it. That's looking pretty horizontal and even. And I keep working out to the sides and that's the easiest way because you can see we've got quite a gap there. Okay. on this side and here's our last ones now it doesn't have to be exactly perfect again when we do the next row it kind of brings it all in but we're looking pretty good so this one on the outside I'm bringing those across yep that looks about right Tighten it up with the other one. Okay. Yep. And there's our first row. So we, I'm going to do another two repeats of this pattern. So I've done my first row of four. The next row, I'm going to leave two chords free. Do three square knots and then leave four chords free in the middle and another three and I'm just going to follow that pattern repeating that pattern three times so I'll check back in with you um, to do the bead detailing on the bottom okay so welcome back we have done now in mine I've done one two three two repeats three lots of that pattern uh, that first pattern we did you may have enough cord to do a fourth one, depending on how tightly you knot. You can attempt to do a fourth one. If you feel you've got plenty of cord left, you can do one more repetition down here. Um, 
if you've knotted more loosely and you don't have the room then three looks absolutely fine. You might knot halfway and think I'm not going to quite be able to finish it. It doesn't matter, just undo it. The whole beauty of macrame is it's so easy. If you make a mistake, if something doesn't look right, it's so easy to just simply undo the knots. So have a bit of a play and an experiment with it. Um, but I'm going to show you now how we're going to finish off. We're adding these beads uh, and then we're going to talk about trimming the ends and finishing it off. Okay, so I'm happy. I've got my, that's my top part of the pattern and then I've got two repeats. So I'm going to make a square knot according to the pattern, 10 centimetres down from the previous knot. So from this one, 10 centimetres down. Now it doesn't have to be 10 centimetres, you might decide you want it a bit longer. I think I'd like it about there. So I'm going to measure that. As long as you do the same on, the both, on both sides, it doesn't matter. It will come up. So, yep. Yeah. We'll do 10. So again, I'm using the first part of my square knot for placement. And that's 10 centimetres and I'm really happy with that. So we do a square knot, 10 centimetres down from this top knot. Okay. Now, we're going to thread a bead through the two middle filler cords. And this is where having a sellotape end comes in really handy. So here... Your kit comes with a packet of wooden beads. I'm using 25mm beads, natural wood beads with a 10mm hole. If you don't have beads, you can leave this step out or just simply have square knots. Now the easiest way to pop is to take your ends and then I twist like a screwdriver motion to get those cords in. Okay, And I just keep twisting until they pop through the other side. So it's the two middle filler cords of our square knot. And there it sits, just under the square knot. Now I take the cords, I'm going to make another square knot underneath. Okay. So. Now I'm going to do the same on this side because again we want it nicely evened up. So we're looking at about 10 centimetres, so I'll do the first half of the square knot and I'm going to measure with my tape measure. So there's our square knot. I'm going to slide a bead through the two centre cords, our filler cords. So popping the two ends in and a twisting motion to get those through. And then a square knot underneath. Now we're just going to continue adding beads on every set of four cords. So the next one you can measure 10 centimetres down again but I find a good effect. I want my first square knot to be level with my bottom square knot on this one. See how I've done that here? That's my bottom square knot and that's my first one of the next one and I've continued down that way. So there's our square knot. It's with the next four cords it's level with the bottom square knot there. Again, we take our two middle filler cords, taking a bead and twisting it on. Okay. So, next group of four, we want the square knot level with the bottom knot, so this is the first one and it's level with that bottom one. There we are, 
take the two middle filler cords and thread our bead through. Okay, and this is the last one on this side because there's going to be four on each side. Okay. We have our square knot. Our first one's going to be level with the bottom one on that side. You can see we're forming a diagonal pattern. Thread a bead through the middle two. And a square knot underneath and that's one side done. And we'll just move over to the other side and complete it. So now we take the next four and we want the square knot level with that bottom one. Take our two middle filler cords. Next four, square knot, level with that bottom knot. And the last group of four cords. Get them nice and even. Okay. We want this one even with that one. Go to the bottom there. So this is the eighth bead. And I like to leave mine at that, but I have included a ninth bead in there. One. Okay, that's it. I like the kind of curvature finish. But I haven't included an extra bead because some people like to do a square knot in the middle and add a bead and another square knot. And you can certainly do that if you like, so you've got an extra bead there. So let's talk briefly about finishing on. We well done. You've nearly completed your wall hanging. Again, I had plenty of length and I could have added another if I wanted to. So let's talk about trimming the ends. I always recommend that you wait until you know where you're going to hang your piece. Um, if it's an area that is shorter, you would cut your fringe shorter. If you've, it's an area with a high ceiling, some people put them in hall, hallways or stairwells you may want more length to your cord. So think about where you're going to hang your wall hanging before you actually cut the ends, because once you've cut them, you can make it shorter, but you certainly can't make it longer. Um, don't overthink it again. Um, you can hang it somewhere if you can find a brick or a line to follow across. If not, you can use your tape measure. And you can just say, at 60 centimetres and follow that line across, okay? So we want 60 centimetres there, 60 there, you could do a diagonal. If you just want to do straight across, then you just hang it somewhere and you just very carefully, sitting on the floor, have it at eye level and just gently cut across. Now once you've cut your ends, they will naturally unfray a little bit, just a slight bit, like this one I'll just lift up has uh, frayed at the ends. I like that soft look and that's fine. If you don't like the frayed edge, just tie a simple overhand knot in the end and then cut it to where you want it. 
uh, and then it won't fray. So that's another way. Some people love fraying and I've had some customers unravel their rope um, and have a, a real fringy look at the bottom. So you can do that. If, bear in mind if you unravel it you can't retie it up afterwards easily. So um, perhaps play with a little bit of excess end that you aren't going to need and see if that's a look you like. You can pull a little bit out and say unravel a bit and hold it there and see if you like it. I said once you've done something it's hard to undo it. But don't overthink it. Um, but that's essentially your wall hanging finish. So we'll just talk briefly. I'll just go back up to the top about hanging your project. Now you can see this one. I've got you get two cords in the kit. This is just a 60 centimetre piece of cord. I've folded in half and tied a simple knot. And then we're just going to do a lark's head knot. So we bring the loop behind and thread it through. You can just hang it from an ordinary picture hook or a little nail. You do get a longer piece of rope. Some people just you can simply tie a double knot on one side and a double knot on the other side and hang it that way if you want. But that's our Tiffany wall hanging. Um, that's completed. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this project. I've certainly enjoyed teaching it to you. And um, thank you for hanging out with me in my studio with Bob and his snoring. And look forward to seeing you another time. Bye.